Babylon is known to be one of the richest early societies. It boasts of its great engineering and agriculture, as well as its golden jewels. But before it reached its glamorous peak, Babylon was merely a scrap. No palace, no walls, not a thing grand. It was just lucky to even have fertile land in a river. Or maybe these two resources were all it needed to rise into riches. This is because what Babylon lacked in resources was filled by its skilled people. Their expertise in engineering, arts, and trade paved the way to making Babylon the grand city as it was remembered in history. But like any other place, Babylon has its fair share of a rich and poor divided neighborhood. Some of its people own beautiful chariots simply for parades, while others break their backs making the chariots for too little pay. One of the people with back-breaking jobs is Arkad. He worked as a scribe. His job is to carve records into clay tablets in long hours every day. Like any other low worker, Arkad was barely making ends meet, and he also had a family to support. One day, Arkad's fate turned around when he met Algamesh, the moneylender, a very rich man who went to ask Arkad for his services on clay tablets. To the moneylender, Arkad may just be an ordinary worker, but to Algamesh, he has a big opportunity to learn secrets that could change his life. So, with a strong will, Arkad convinced him to speak his wisdom on wealth. Soon enough, Algamesh became his advisor and mentor on money matters. Arkad learned the proper ways of saving, budgeting, and investing. He improved bit by bit with the wisdom passed down by his mentor. He also learned through failed partnerships and temptations. He once entrusted his savings to a brickmaster who was seeking to buy and sell jewels. But to their disappointment, his partner was tricked by the Phoenicians with fake gems. He once gave in to a grand feast and bought expensive things instead of building more investments. But Arkad kept learning until he mastered the laws of wealth. Algamesh, his mentor, became very fond of him for the person he had become. When Algamesh reached his old age, his sons did not learn how to earn their own gold. So he partnered with Arkad to manage a large part of his properties. Arkad, with his built experience, multiplied Algamesh's wealth even more. And when the old man died, Arkad was given a share in everything he owns. This is the story of Arkad. It was a story of small beginnings and grand endings. This is how he became the richest man in Babylon. He was the wealthiest that one day the king asked him to teach people the best practices of gaining wealth. Soon enough, the once curious learner became a teacher to many. If you stick around with me in this video, you will also learn what Arkad and the lots of Babylon had. Lesson 1. Save at least 10% of what you earn. The first lesson Arkad taught the people, which was also the first thing he learned from Algamesh, is very simple. Save money. You may have heard this a million times, but probably because it really does kickstart the journey to wealth. Algamesh said, A part of all you earn is yours to keep. When you receive your daily wage or monthly salary, you buy your meals and pay the restaurants, you buy your groceries and pay the stores, you buy your clothes and pay the brands. So why should you forget to pay yourself? It is your own money in the first place, so pay yourself first. To start the habit of saving 10% of your earnings, pay yourself first. The logic is pretty basic. If you want your purse or wallet to have money, fill it with money and keep it there. Let's say you earn $100 in half a month. The moment your manager hands you your paycheck, keep in mind that you are not allowed to spend the 10%. That will be $10 saved and kept. In one month, with two paychecks, you will have $20 already. If you keep this up for the following months, it's impossible for your purse to go empty. It will always have money in it. Or better yet, create a bank account and deposit the $10 immediately. You'll be less tempted to spend your savings if you're not physically handling them. I'm pretty sure Algamish and Arkad would have also done this if banks and ATMs were available in their times. So, imagine how much you can save in a whole year. That would be $20 monthly for 12 months or equal to $240. That's definitely not an empty purse or bank account. Lesson number two, control your spending. You may be thinking, how can I save 10% when it's even hard to live off the 100% of my earnings? This leads us to the next lesson, control your spending. 
Arkad understood that your day-to-day -day needs will always equal your income, so you have to put a stop to that thought, protested. Keep in mind that you only have 90% of your earnings to spend. You'll be surprised to see that you can actually squeeze your needs into that 90%. This is why it is important to learn how to budget. The true goal of a budget is to help you grow your savings by lessening your expenses. First, make a list of all items that you think you need and how much they cost. Is the total amount lesser than 90% of your earnings? If yes, then good for you. You can choose whether to spend it for enjoyment or add that to your savings. But if the total amount is greater than 90%, then study your budget again. Surely there are some items that need to be crossed out. Some of those items are just wants and not needs. Take out as many items to match that 90% of earnings. If you come to a point where you think you can no longer cross out anything because you're convinced that these are necessary expenses, then try looking for cheaper alternatives. The markets today have so many different products to offer, and the internet is full of information. Do everything you can to make your budget work. Just don't spend your 10% savings. Lesson number three, invest your savings. Soon enough, as you're saving a tenth of your pay and controlling your expenses, you will notice that your purse or bank account is getting fat. A big saving is satisfying, but it earns nothing. This is the third lesson. Invest your savings. Algamish once told Arkad, Every piece of gold you earn is a slave to work for you. Every copper it earns is its child that can also earn for you. If you would become rich, then what you save must earn, and its children must earn that all may help to give you the wealth you wanted. Now this is the part where you have to be most careful. Investing is supposed to create for you a stream of income that could continuously fill your purse, even when you're just sitting around or taking your time off to travel. So, it is important to note that you have to choose your investments wisely. Do you remember when Arkad partnered with a brickmaker to buy and sell jewels, but they were tricked? Well, Arkad lost all of his savings there, so he had to start saving again and begin from an empty purse. This is why you have to choose your investments carefully and guard your treasures against the laws. There are five laws of gold according to the book, and you have to know them because wealth is reserved only for the people who know its laws and follow them. The first law is that gold comes to people who always save a tenth of their earnings to secure their own and their family's future. This is our lesson number one, so congratulations, you're already one step ahead. The second law is that gold is very eager to work for you when it is invested in the right opportunities. When you find the best place to invest your money, it will gladly multiply for you as the years pass by. The third law is gold clings to its owner, who carefully takes the advice of wise men in handling money. Find yourself a mentor just like what Arkad did with Algamesh. When you seek advice from your elders who are wise in handling money, you receive the wisdom of many years. You may say that their old techniques can no longer be applied in today's world. Yes, maybe some, but there are lessons which are as important in your times as it is in theirs. Just look at what we're doing now. We're learning wisdom from a book set thousands of years ago. But you have to admit that you're gaining so much information. If you think you can understand things better when it comes from someone a little nearer to your age, then you can also find one nowadays. There are so many young financial advisors and mentors out there, and they're even making a living out of their financial advice. So rest assured that they have strived to gain the wisdom on wealth. Keep meeting people who are wise in business and investments. It doesn't matter if you know them personally, read them in a magazine, or you have just stumbled upon them online. Listen to their advice. Maybe have a notebook for you to write everything you learn, and then reflect and decide which of their advice works best for your plan. The fourth law is gold slips away from a person who invests in businesses or purposes which he is not familiar with or not even approved by the people who are skilled in investments. This is Arkad's first mistake in investing. He trusted a brickmaker for a jewelry business. Will you go to a farmer when you're sick? No, you consult a doctor. Likewise, will you go to a doctor to ask about crops? No, you ask a farmer. So, if someone offers you a business, do a background check. How much does this person know about this business or in business itself? And how much do you know about this business? 
Don't decide in haste just because you know that person or just because he or she offered a great return. Research about the business. Ask a business plan from that person. Listen to the details and processes. Make sure that it was carefully thought. Then, if you see some light in the plan and it looks like it can be a good opportunity, go to your mentors. Discuss with them and ask advice if the business will give you long-term profits. The fifth law is gold flies away from a person who trusts investments that promise impossible great earnings or who believes in the advice of tricksters and schemers. Like great timings, when you have money saved up, many opportunities will come before you. But not all are real opportunities. There are so many stories of scams, especially today. Many times people will approach you and invite you to invest some money in their company, promising that your investment can double or even triple in just a few months. Remember, there is always a high risk hiding in every plan to gain great wealth suddenly. Maybe it really will double your investment in a month, but what happens after? Will you continue to make money from it, or will you need to invest some more? What happens in the long run? In the words of Algomi Dosh Esh, a small return and a safe one is better than a risk. Keep these five laws in your mind and master them. Use them in choosing your investments. In investing, it's important to learn how to make sure that your principal or your first money investment will always be safe. Lesson number four, build your own house. The next lesson you will have to learn is that you have to build your own house. Once you're doing well with your investments, it will now be easier to go to money lenders, such as banks, to apply for a house loan. The banks and other money lending companies are also looking for good investments. They are more than happy to help people who can repay them. They will need proof of your stream of income to make sure that you can regularly pay on time. This is a good means of building a house early in your years, because if you're just going to count on your savings, then it could take years before you can own a house considering that building one requires a large sum. You already have the plan of building a house, and you're already saving up for it, so why not have one now while you're saving up? This is even the better choice when you're just renting a place right now because having your own house will mean no rentals anymore. You have to consider this as early as you can because it's a different joy and fulfillment to have your own roof sheltering you. A house is a wise investment, especially if you already have a family or you're about to have one. Lesson number five, secure your own and your family's future. When you're becoming more stable, you have to start planning for the years to come. Old age will come to you, or worse, your health may fail you. You will no longer be able to work, so it is important to have enough money which can keep on working for you instead. Secure your own and your family's future. The wise start to buy houses and lands because these two properties, especially the land, will have higher values over time. When the right time comes, these properties can be sold at a great price. It is also good to take out retirement plans and life insurances. You can also start investing in stocks. Invest in companies that will keep on growing for the years to come. Try to learn the many opportunities in the stock market, and of course, there's no better security for your family than passing down to your children the wisdom on wealth. Lesson number six, keep learning about your craft. No matter how much you learn about saving and investing, there will always be more to know. Keep learning your craft. If you're a businessman, keep learning the market to sell more. If you're a farm owner, keep studying methods and crops to produce more. If you're a freelancer, keep learning different skills to earn more. Do not lose the thirst for wisdom that you had in the very beginning. You started small, you aimed to grow, and you can always go bigger. The more experiences you have, the more real opportunities you attract. There are just so many more lessons to learn in real life. These six lessons from the book are just guides or a head start. But since you're still watching this video, I'm going to let you in on a few more secrets from the book. First, if you want to become rich, action is your best friend. All this wisdom passed on remains dead if not put into action. Second, make a few great friends along the way. Choose people who also live by the wisdom of wealth. There will come a time when you will need help, and it is wise to accept aid from someone you already trust. Third, if you are helping a friend, help him or her in a way that will not bring a burden to yourself. Always be cautious. Fourth, 
If at some point you have many unpaid debts, do not keep on borrowing to repay your first debts. What you have to do is to keep working, then divide your pay. Save 10%, live off the 70%, and use the 20% for payments to all your creditors, portioned to how much you owe them. Fifth, you have to decide to claim your share of the good things in life. As our lesson number six taught us, we have to keep learning. So if you want to learn more, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. And what action will you take after watching this video? Tell us in the comments section below. Until then, have an amazing day. See you soon.